evening. It is um, after the six o'clock hour. We're going to call to order this special meeting of the uh, city of Crescent City, January 8th, 2018. And if our clerk would please call the roll. Council Member Greeno? Here. Council Member Short? Here. Council Member Fallman? Here. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Keim? Here. And Mayor Inscourt? I am here. Would you all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? And begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We do not have anything to report out of closed session, so we move into our public comment period. Any member of the audience is invited to address the city. Uh, council on any matter that is within the jurisdiction of the city of Crescent City. Comments of public interest or matters that are appearing on the agenda are accepted. However, note that the council is not able to undertake extended discussion or act on any non-agendized items. Such items can be referred to staff for appropriate action, which may include placement on a future agenda. All comments need to be directed to the entire council and any comments that are not the microphone will be out of order and not part of the public record. After receiving recognition from myself, please state your name and your city or county residency for the record and limit your public comment to three minutes and you will be given an opportunity to have another three minutes to speak on any agendized item. Do we have any general public comment tonight? Seeing no general public comment tonight, then we will uh, close public comment and we'll move on with our agenda. Under reports and presentations, we have the 2016-2017 audit. Ms. Lieber. Our auditor appears to be running a little late, so if we could move this to a little later in the agenda, that would be appreciated. All right. When Mr. Bedoli arrives, we will take this up. So Thank we you. will move on. We have uh, some items on the consent calendar this evening, regular council meeting minutes and closed session meeting minutes from December 18th and January 3rd. The warrants claims list for December 9th through December 29th, 2017 payroll uh, report for December 23rd, paid December 28th and um, January 6th, 2018 paid January 12th. And, uh, the uh, recommendation to accept the audit report and the six of the interim city manager agreement and the attached resolution. Uh, there are a couple of things that council that we do need to pull. We need to pull item number two uh, for a correction in the minutes from our uh, December 18th um, meeting. We need to pull the audit report because we can't approve it till we hear it. Um, and I would like for us to uh, pull item number six, the resolution and the interim city manager agreement. Move to approve item three and four on consent. I have a motion to approve items three and four. Do I have second. a second? I have second. a second, Mr. Greeno. Uh, any public comment on these items of the close of the uh, consent calendar? Seeing now, close public comment and bring it back to our clerk. Would you please uh, poll the council? Yes, sir. Council Member Short? Yes. Council Member Greeno? Yes. Council Member Fallman? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Keim? Yes. And Mayor Inscore? Yes. Let's take these in order under number two, under the council meeting minutes, and went back and looked at the minutes and then looked at the actual video. And the action that we took regarding Ordinance 801 was to send it back to the to staff to bring brought back with some suggested changes regarding um, the it only being uh, for new construction or or moved yeah. and and what what the minutes reflect is that we uh, waived by full reading and uh, and send it that way which is not what we what we did so we just need to correct the minutes to reflect the action that we that we actually took and I sent the, the video link to our clerk so that she would make those corrections. So, any questions about that? Okay. Um, then I, I, I guess I, I need a motion that we make the corrections in the minute to reflect 
the action the council took on December 18th. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Seconded. All right. Would you please pull the vote? Yes, sir. Council Member Fallman? Yes. Council Member Short? Yes. Council Member Greeno? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kime? Yes. And Mayor Inscore? Yes. All right. We'll hold off on the audit report and we'll bring that back after the audit. Uh, under the city manager uh, agreement, I think that, that, uh, that we have a, um, an interesting opportunity with this that goes beyond just simply approving a, a contract, given the fact that it's an opportunity to, to give uh, uh, two things. Number one, the, the appreciation to our current interim city manager, uh, Mike Young for the work that he's done, as well as the recognition of the opportunity that we're providing for one of our own employees. And I think that just simply approving it on consent and moving it through just just didn't feel um, quite right. Uh, so I don't have any action to take other than that I thought we should talk about it and be able to recognize um, both Mike and, and Eric in an open session. Otherwise, we're just saying yes and move on. Some of you are thinking, well, why did we come tonight? So. Uh, with that in mind, uh, I guess I will just simply make, m note that on the on the uh, the contract itself, it re it's reflects a 10% um, because it just has a number, a 10% uh, increase over Mr. Weir's base salary. That's what the numbers r reflect. So, is, is there any other questions specifically about the contract? No, sir. Council, no. council, we all looked at. Mm -hmm. All right. Then before we, uh, uh, I guess we can vote on the, the contract and then I, uh, at that point in time, we can allow Mr. Young to, to cede authority over to our new interim um, city manager. So do I have, do I have a, a, a motion to approve um, uh, resolution 2018-02? So moved. I have a motion, do I have a second? Seconded. All right, I have a motion second. This is a big, Big vote here. I'm getting grinning. I love it. <laughs> Would you please pull the vote? Yes. Uh, Council Member Greeno? Yes. Council Member Fallman? Yes. Council Member Short? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kime? Absolutely. And Mayor Henscore? Yes. Thank you. And congratulations, uh, Mr. Weir. Uh, but before Mr. Young leaves, uh, uh, Mr. Weir and I talked about this today, and I just thought that it would be appropriate to say some, some farewell words as he leaves us. Uh, Mike Young uh, first served Crescent City as city manager uh, from 1973 to 1979. Some of us on this council were, were in high school then. Some of us on this council weren't born then. <laughs> no offense, Mike. Uh, served as a, a, a private sector civil engineer uh, from 79 to 97. Uh, he went to work as the Delnort County engineer from 97 to 2000. Finally, he saw the light, came back to the city in, uh, in 2000 and served as our public works director from 2000 to 2003. Uh, served previously as our interim city manager during a time of transitions and some challenging times in 2008. Uh, served as a pro project uh, part-time engineer uh, for four or five years for us and then came back again at a time of transition when we needed um, some solid, even-handed leadership uh, this last year in 2017, uh, spent eight months with us. Just some accomplishments, uh, stabilization of our organization, I think having somebody that could come in and, and just be able to do the job. Uh, the fact that he enabled us, along with staff, to find the opportunity to purchase a Bank of America building for City Hall, big deal, really a big deal. We've completed some of the projects that have uh, been long-term projects, the Head Start remodel, the uh, uh, emergency uh, Harding, Street dorm, Harding Street storm drain repair, the submission of our largest CBDG contract, uh, along with what I think is one of the most exciting opportunities that we've had in the city in a long time, and that's the storm drain process. And you go, how could storm drain be that exciting? It's provided us an opportunity to possibly do something with Front Street, which has absolutely been impossible for us to address and so the the ability to do some of those things coaxial access which is almost done elevated tank which is almost done dog park 
the work towards a, a police department master plan, all these things are things that Mike stepped into and provided good leadership along with our fantastic staff. And, uh, and so Mike, I, I just want to personally as mayor say thank you. And uh, while I hope this is not, uh, you don't take offense, but for 44 years you have, you have invested in this community, which is again, longer than some of the people on this dais have even been alive. Uh, but we appreciate that. I appreciate it very much. I appreciate not only your commitment to this community, uh, but your commitment specifically to us as a council to try to help us uh, govern the very best that we can. And so I want to just tell you personally and collectively, thank you for your service. I'll give the keys now <laughs> <laughs> to Mr. Weir. Uh, as funny as it may seem, I've actually enjoyed it. it it's, it's a little different coming back and acting as an interim, uh, knowing that it's not long term, uh, coming out of retirement, so to speak. Uh, uh, so it's, uh, I've, you, know, you, you paid me to have fun, it's, uh, sort of, it's, in, in a way. Uh, I've enjoyed it. Uh, we do have gotten a lot accomplished, but a lot of it is because you have some exceptional department heads. Uh, no one person can do it. Uh, um, uh, they all do their job and they do it well, and they're all committed to uh, the city council. Uh, I'm going to name some of them. One of them is uh, Megan, the housing authority. I enjoyed working with Megan, mainly because I never had a problem. <laughs> I, know, I, knew, I knew that things were being done right, and, and she does a great job. Um, um, I have another police chief. Uh, police are always difficult. Uh, they have a difficult job to do. Uh, they always see the worst of people, but yet we have a great police department. Mike mentioned we've also almost got it up to full staff. We should just short one position now. we recruited several. One fine officer sitting over there tonight here is our, our security. Uh, he's a recent uh, addition to the, to the department. Uh, our fire chief, uh, Steve Wakefield, has been He's been in the city probably as long or longer than, than I have been, believe it or not. And uh, he does a great job. One of these days you're going to have, have a hard time trying to, to, uh, to, to fill his shoes. Um, uh, Linda, uh, the finance director, has done an excellent job. I, uh, made my job a lot easier, knowing that somebody, um, although sometimes she clutches the piggy bank too tight. It's, uh, <laughs> good job, Linda. They had to get, uh, <laughs> But she's really good to work with. She knows what she's doing. She's done an excellent job. Um, Eric Taylor um, has also, uh, he was one of the ones that also helped bring the, uh, the city hall about. He was one that uh, first possibly picked up on the possibility that, that might, be, might be available. Uh, Eric uh, Weir, of course, going to step into this, uh, this office. Uh, as I told you the other day, condolences to both of you, <laughs> the, the council and Eric. Uh, but I think Eric will, will do a great, great job. And I don't know if I missed anybody. I think that covers the, you know. So anyway, a lot of what's happened has happened because you have the excellent people working for you. And, uh, and not only working for you, but committed, really committed to it. And uh, I really enjoyed my time here. And it's not like I'm leaving. I came here in 1973. I thought at that time I would be here for a short while, and here I am, still here, and uh, raised my kids here, grandkids, and I even have great grandchildren here now. So uh, I'll be here until they bury me. <laughs> Not soon, I hope. All right, thank you, Mike. All right, I'll let Eric take over for a while. All right, Permanently. very good. Good timing. <laughs> All right, Mr. Weir, welcome. Uh, thank you, Mayor, members, members of the council. Uh, if I could, uh, I'd like to just say a couple words. Uh, Mr. Young has been phenomenal to work with uh, the past eight months. We have accomplished a lot as 
as mayor, you, uh, you recognized a lot of those accomplishments. Uh, for myself, I look forward to, uh, to this challenge, this opportunity. Uh, thank you guys. We have a great staff, and I know we're going to accomplish a lot. So, thank you. All right, very good. Okay, we're going to leave the final item, uh, number five, on our consent calendar. We will come back to that. Mr. Badawi is here, and we're, we're Linda, do you, do you want to introduce our, our auditor and the audit presentation, and then we will come back to uh, the approval after the presentation. Okay, uh, thank you, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, Mr. Ahmed Badawi is here to present the fiscal 16-17 audit to you, which has recently been completed. Um, he has been our independent auditor for several years now. Um, I would like to say from a staff perspective, it's been a pleasure working with him, and we're very appreciative that he comes all the way up here from Oakland to talk to you for about 20 minutes. <laughs> um, so he'll go ahead and give his presentation and answer any questions that you have about the audit and what's coming up. Thanks. Well, good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Well, thanks, you, thanks for having me, and I apologize if I was a little late. I wasn't sure exactly where, where I was on the agenda. Uh, but thank you for taking the time. I'm going to present to you the results of the 2017 audit. Uh, you probably have it on your screen here. Uh, but the agenda for today, I'll let you know who the engagement team was, uh, what were the deliverables and the scope of our audit, areas we emphasized on during our audit process, uh, some of the required, uh, the type of audit opinion we issued and summarized for you some of the numbers in your financial statements, uh, also provide to you some of the required communications, and then uh, give you an update of the new accounting standards that are coming your way. So we'll start with the engagement team. You can see it was a, really a small engagement team. I was here the whole time and I had a staff with me. We always have an IT specialist that we use if we need to, we didn't really need to, uh, but I, it was myself and a staff member for the whole time of the engagement or the whole time of the audit. Uh, area, uh, deliverables in the scope of our audit. We were mainly engaged to provide an opinion on the city's basic financial statements. Those are the, the reports that you were provided, basically that has all your funds, all your assets, all your liabilities. Uh, also, we were engaged to issue an opinion on the Housing Authority, the Crescent City Housing Authority, which is going to be done later. There, there needs to be some online submission that are usually due by March 31st, and then normally we finalize around that time. Uh, but the audit is being completed, so it's really just a matter of procedures to finalize the Housing Authority. Um, also, the city is a recipient of federal grants, so you are subject to what we call the single audit, which is a compliance audit of the federal expenditures. Uh, so we, pro we provided an opinion on that, and of course the city is subject to government auditing standards, which requires us to consider your internal control over financial reporting and also to provide an, uh, a report or an opinion on our consideration of those controls. Uh, we perform what we call uh, agreed upon procedures on your GAN limit. Your GAN limit or your appropriation limit is really the cap of how much the city can budget from tax revenues in, 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 a, in any given year. Uh, so we perform an, uh, an evaluation of that and just make sure that you're not very close to the cap. And then finally, communication with the governing body, which is what I'm doing today. And we will be issuing a letter summarizing the communication as well. So areas that we emphasized on, we had three major areas. Those are not necessarily unique to Crescent City. We believe that those areas are just significant by nature uh, in any government agency that we audit. Uh, the first one is revenue and receivables. Um, revenues is always a higher risk area. Uh, everyone likes to have more revenues and less expenses. So there's always the motivation to inflate the revenues and understate the expenses. So of course, we, uh, it's easy actually auditing the revenues here in Crescent City because we are able to send confirmations to outside parties, a lot of your hotels, for example, to confirm the transit occupancy tax that they pay to the city. We confirm with the county all the property taxes and all the other taxes received. And we also confirm with the State Board of Equalization regarding sales tax. Uh, in addition to that, we do some testing ourselves on revenues and license and permits and, and those types of things. Um, pension is another area of uh, significance and focus for us. 
uh, one of it, uh, one of the reasons, the numbers uh, are significant. It's a, it's a big liability, and uh, and it's also very fluid. That it is really based on a lot of assumptions, and uh, it is very sensitive to those assumptions. So we actually spent quite a bit of time reviewing management uh, entries to record those transactions. We communicate with the pension plan, with CalPERS. We communicate with their auditors. We confirm with them how much money the city have invested with CalPERS and a variety of other things. And then finally, management override of controls. This is in any organization that we audit. Management is the one who designed those controls, and they are responsible for monitoring the controls. And they can choose to override them at any time if they, uh, they choose to do so. Uh, you know, sometimes it's okay if there is a valid reason why they had to do that and it was properly disclosed, but uh, for most of the times it's not okay. So we try to review any estimates uh, made by management, make sure that there are no bias there. We try to incorporate an element of unpredictability in our audit procedures. Uh, we review the, the journal entries prepared by management to make sure that they are properly supported and that there is a, a good business rationale behind it, uh, in addition to a variety of other procedures to override uh, or to overcome that risk. In terms of auditor's opinion, we have issued what we call an unmodified opinion. That is basically a clean opinion. And the um, opinion states that the audit was performed in accordance with government auditing standards and also in accordance with generally accepted auditing standards. Uh, what an unmodified opinion means, it means that the financial statements are fairly stated in all material respects, that all estimates are reasonable, all disclosure is properly reflected in the financial statements, and that accounting uh, policies have been consistently applied. Uh, I do want to emphasize uh, about fairly stated in all material respect. I'm sure. Uh, most of you know that an audit is not an absolute assurance, so we do it on a test basis. We don't look at every transaction. We also don't look at every $5 transaction, so we have some materiality thresholds that we will not go under. So that allows us to provide a reasonable assurance, but not an absolute assurance. A reasonable assurance is a high level of assurance, and, and that's what's really commonly accepted in the industry. Uh, in terms of the financial statements, wanted to show you what's in your financial statements just uh, from a 30,000 foot view, really not getting into the detail. Uh, so over the last three years, this is the composition of your assets. This is very consistent with almost every city we audit. The two largest assets you have are your cash and investments, which are crucial for obviously operation and liquidity, and your capital assets. Uh, the, the, the city raises resources and use them to build infrastructure and acquire equipment and things to be able to operate. Uh, I would say that over the last three years, changes have been fairly consistent, nothing out of the ordinary that will uh, re require us to uh, do additional investigation. Uh, on, the, on this slide is the composition of your liabilities. And you can see that you have two big items there. Your long-term debt, and that's mainly the sewer uh, uh, outstanding loan. Uh, and then your net pension liability. Uh, the long-term debt has been going down. Basically, the city is making the scheduled payments as scheduled. The pension liability has gone up. That's the case with every single agency in CalPERS. Uh, it really has nothing to do with the city. The city has met its obligation in terms of the required contributions. CalPERS estimates for investment earnings were not uh, uh, realized. Uh, in the last actuary evaluation, so you're seeing the result of that, basically. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about pension in the next few slides. Uh, net position is your equity, your assets minus your liabilities. And uh, normally equity is uh, divided into multiple categories. The first one, the net investment in capital assets, which is usually the highest one. It is also the one that is not in a spendable form because you have already spent the money in infrastructure and streets and roads and, and, and even though those are very valuable assets, you really cannot sell them to anybody, so they're not really uh, something that you can eventually spend. Uh, restricted amounts are normally restricted either by bond agreement, um, debt agreement, grantor, uh, those types of things. And then finally, the unrestricted, that's the amount that under the council control. and. Uh, the good thing is that this amount has been going up over the last few years, um, and right now it stands at about 3.4 million. Changes in that position, 
that's pretty much your net profit. I always am reluctant to say net profit because cities are usually not in the business of making profits. But basically, this is your revenues minus your expenses. And you can see it's been fairly consistent over the last three years, $2.4 million in 2017. That's basically excessive revenues over expenses. Keep in mind, this is on a full accrual basis, so that after calculating depreciation and a variety of other things. So that's a little different than when you look at your general fund or your regular funds, uh, because they follow different uh, bases of accounting. Uh, net cost of service to tax revenue. So uh, this is a, an area where we basically try to show you how much does it cost to run all city operations. And we subtract from that any revenues that those various departments are able to generate on their own. So for example, if we're looking at public works, we will see how much expenditures were incurred for public works. And then we subtract from that any grants that public works was able to get or any fees that they're charging customers or any, uh, anything of that nature. The idea is to see how dependent are you on tax revenues and whether tax revenues are sufficient to cover your cost. So in uh, your case, it's always been sufficient. Uh, you can see over the last three years, it's been fairly consistent. Uh, I do want to bring to your attention that this is really taken into consideration also your proprietary funds, so water and sewer which normally tend to have more uh, income or, or more profits than the governmental activities. So if we were to just look at your governmental activities, you would see that the number would look a little bit different. Uh, that uh, basically the net cost of service in 2017 was 2.5 million versus the tax revenues of 3.7 million. That's still pretty decent, um, but just wanted to show you basically the breakdown. If we were to just focus on your general fund, obviously the general fund is w where most of your unrestricted resources are. So it's a measurement of the city's liquidity. And uh, what we normally do is what we look at your unrestricted fund balance in the general fund, and we compare that to your annual expenditures. The idea is to see in the very unlikely scenario that all your revenue sources stop coming in for whatever reason, how long can you continue to pay your bills using your existing fund balance? And we've determined that you probably can continue to pay your bills for about five months. Uh, the minimum recommended ratio by the Government Finance Offices Association is two to four months. Uh, I want to underscore minimum, uh, meaning that you don't need to be in the two to four months. If you are below two months, uh, it raises a lot of concerns about whether can you continue to pay your bills and whether can you continue to be a going concern. So obviously the more you have in that ratio, the better. Um, all right, I think other than that, uh, we can talk about the pension liability. You know, this slide uh, may be a little bit too complicated, so if you don't like it, just ignore it. But uh, I'm just going to basically walk you through, uh, or at least I wanted to highlight for you that there, in your pension plan every year, there are many things that are changing. Uh, certain things will need to be recognized immediately as pension expense, and others can be spread over time. So everything in blue has to be recognized immediately. Everything in red is spread over time. But just to let you know what happens in your pension plan every year, your employees work and they earn more benefits, which increase your liability. The compensation changes also impact the liability. Uh, the contributions that you make throughout the year and the contributions that the employees make and any benefit payments that are made to retirees, all of those impact your pension liability. Uh, also, CalPERS uses actuarial and economic uh, uh, use assumptions, and sometimes those actual results are different from the assumptions, and that will impact your pension liability. Also, changes made to the assumptions. So CalPERS, for example, are making those changes. They're going from 7.65 or 7.75 to 7.5, and now they're going to go all the way to 7 in the rate of return. So these are all assumptions that are changing that will impact your liability. Uh, also changes in the city's proportionate share. So you're part of a pool, and every year CalPERS will tell you, uh, this year you, you basically owe 10% of the pool liability. Next year it may be 12%. So those can impact your liability as well. Um, and obviously the investment income. So I just wanted to kind of highlight what are the changes that we are normally looking for every year and how we account for them in your pension liability. 
Um, and now to more easier slides, basically this was your pension expense over the last three years. You can see that, uh, and also your contribution to CalPERS over the last three years. So you can see that all of them are going up and are most likely to continue to go up. Uh, this is really one of the most vulnerable areas for most of our clients where you can't really control it, but the anticipation is more money will need to be put in there. Uh, if we look at the funded status of those plans, you have two plans uh, within the pool uh, or with CalPERS. The first one is a miscellaneous plan. And you can see as of the most recent valuation or measurement date, the city had about almost $16 million in assets, about $22 million in liability, then, and that leaves you with about $6.4 million in unfunded liability. That's just for the miscellaneous plan. For the safety plan, you have about seven million in assets. You have about 9.8, almost 10 million in liabilities, and that leaves you with about 2.7 million in unfunded liability. Uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, the pension liability is really one giant estimate, and it is very sensitive to those assumptions that are used, specifically the discount rate or the rate of return on investment. So I just wanted to let you, or to show you what would be your numbers if this rate goes up by 1% or goes down by 1%. Let me first say it would be great if it goes up by 1%, but it is almost uh, zero chance, <laughs> close to zero chance that it will go up. Most likely it will go down. So as of right now, you are the middle line, the 7.65%. That's the rate that CalPERS is using to calculate your pension liability. And that basically puts your total liability at about 9,185,000. If CalPERS goes and starts using 6.65 rate of return, your liability would automatically go up to 13.5 million. That's without the city doing anything, just basically changing that number by 1%. Uh, it is most likely that CalPERS will be around that number sometime in the near future. Uh, so, uh, my personal opinion is that the 13.5 is probably a more accurate number than the 9 million. However, we are really trying to look into the future. Uh, who knows? Uh, the market's been doing great in, uh, over the last year, and uh, if it continues to do so, you know, this number is probably going to go down. So, it's just hard to be able to predict, but uh, again, that's what the actuaries do, really. Uh, so I just wanted to highlight that uh, for you, and then um, the city also offer another type of benefits, is the, what we call the uh, OPEP, or the retiree medical benefits. Those are basically the medical insurance after retirement. And the cost has been fairly consistent. I mean, it's been going up uh, slightly, but obviously uh, medical premiums also been going up. Um, and to show you the funded status, the city has uh, opened a trust account with PARS, and the city started putting money aside to fund that liability. I believe the city have more money now, but uh, as of the most recent actuary evaluation, the city had about 291,000. Uh, however, the city's been putting money, I believe, every year uh, in that trust. Uh, you have currently about 1.5 million in liabilities, and that leaves you with about 1.2 million unfunded portion. Keep in mind, this is as of July 2015, the most recent actuary evaluation. So next year, the city will be getting a new actuary evaluation if the city hasn't already done so. So the numbers will, will obviously look different. Uh, other than that, I just wanted to walk you through some of the required communications uh, that I have to communicate to you. So actually, this is the only required part of the presentation. And honestly, uh, it is not the most exciting part, so I add the first part to at least keep your interest, because if it's just this part, uh, you're probably not going to want me to come here. Uh, but in any case, uh, our responsibility under generally accepted auditing standards as your independent auditor is to mainly express an opinion on your financial statements, whether they're fairly stated or not. We're also responsible for evaluating the internal control over financial reporting, uh, evaluating compliance with laws, regulations, contracts, and grants. Uh, we're responsible for evaluating the tone at the top and making sure management is sending the right message to the rest of the organization about the importance of controls, about the consequences of committing fraud or overriding controls or those types of things. 
uh, we are responsible for ensuring that your financial statements are clear and transparent. And finally, we're responsible to communicate with the governing body, with the city council. Management have a lot of responsibilities in this process. Uh, management is ultimately responsible for the financial statements. So like I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, an audit only provides a reasonable assurance, not absolute assurance. So management still take responsibility for those financials. Um, I don't believe that's the issue here, but sometimes uh, in, in some other clients, we sometimes feel that there is misunderstanding uh, or uh, about the expectation that uh, the client feels because they hired an independent audit firm, that that relieves management from its responsibility and it really puts the responsibility on the auditor. So I just wanted to clarify that that is really not the case. Management still retain that responsibility. Of course, we are responsible to the extent our professional standards requires us to be. Uh, management is the one responsible for establishing and maintaining internal controls, for making all financial records available to us during the audit process, for adjusting the accounting records for any material misstatements, for preventing and detecting fraud by establishing procedures or controls to prevent and detect fraud, inform us of all known and suspected fraud, comply with laws and regulations, and take corrective action on any audit findings. In terms of independence, we are obviously your independent auditor, so we have to maintain our independence, and that's solely our responsibility, so the city doesn't really need to do anything to ensure we're independent. And we follow a variety of rules from the AICPA to the California Board of Accountancy, um, and it really encompasses uh, many things from do we have uh, us as uh, individuals, either myself or anyone in my team, do we have any relationships with city management or city staff, direct or indirect? Uh, obviously, we have to evaluate those and we remove those individuals from uh, the audit. We did not identify any kind of relationships. We also have to evaluate any additional services we offer the city and make sure that those services do not impair our independence. Uh, so if we have, you know, if we charge you $100,000 in consulting fees, uh, that may bear our in, our, on our independence because the audit is not really that expensive and, you know, we may be inclined to want, want to make sure to keep the consulting work so that impact our independence. So luckily we don't do any of those additional services, uh, but it's basically part of our responsibility to evaluate our independence. In terms of timing of the audit, we believe that the audit was performed in the time frame communicated to the city. Uh, in terms of significant accounting policies and unusual transactions, there were really no unusual transactions, but we have considered uh, several accounting uh, policies. Uh, one of them was the first one, GASB 74, which really dealing with the trust fund for uh, OPEP, the, the PARS fund, so we implemented that this year. I believe the other ones were not really applicable to the city. Uh, in terms of management judgment and accounting estimates, I mentioned earlier that not every number in your financials is an actual number. Some are estimates, and that's totally acceptable as long as there is a reasonable basis behind those estimates. So I just wanted to give you an idea about some of those numbers uh, that are estimated. Uh, also, in terms of sensitive disclosures, uh, I just listed for you a few note disclosures that I believe provide some important information. There is nothing really alarming about those no disclosures, but they really just provide additional information that helps the reader understand the composition of these numbers. Uh, I'm pleased to say that we encountered no difficulties during the audit. We really felt that the city was prepared and very responsive to our requests, and uh, we believe that they do uh, good accounting. Uh, the quality of the schedules and the backup that we get from city staff are considered to be, in our opinion, uh, good quality. So appreciate that. Um, there were no audit adjustments uh, during the course of the audit. That's a very good sign. Uh, basically, if we come in and start looking at your records and then we're coming up with all sorts of corrections, that really brings questions about the accuracy of the accounting that is being done throughout the year. Uh, so we felt very pleased that there were no adjustments. Uh, there were no significant risks or exposure that were identified to us. We communicate normally with legal counsel, so they disclose to us outstanding litigations. Uh, obviously, uh, those litigations, sometime, some of them are covered by insurance. The ones that are not, we want to make sure that they are properly disclosed. 
but other than that, there was really nothing that came to our attention that uh, caused us concerns. Uh, we're pleased to report that we had no disagreement with management and we had no material weaknesses identified in internal controls. Uh, we have requested certain representations from management that were dated December 27th. That's a standard procedure. We normally ask the city manager and the finance director to sign a letter basically telling us that they have disclosed to us all known facts, that they're not aware of any fraud, and it's, it's a very lengthy letter full of representations that we put reliance on. Uh, we're not aware that management has contracted with any other accounting firm to consult on any audit matters. Uh, other than our engagement letter and the representation letter, we had no other significant communications with management. There were no material uncertainties relating to events and conditions, and we have not become aware of any instance of fraud or illegal act that were not reported to us by management. Uh, following the listing of all the new accounting standards that were issued, that doesn't mean that they are going to be applicable to the city, but as we uh, get closer to them, we normally discuss them with uh, city staff and and we also host a training seminar every year that we invite the city and we also provide training on those new accounting standards and what it will take to comply with them. Uh, with that, I want to say thank you very much for the opportunity. We really appreciate it and uh, more than happy to answer your questions. Thank you, Mr. Bedawi. Questions? Council? No? I'd just like to say that I participated with the audit committee with Councilman Greeno, and um, I want to thank Mr. Bedali again for making it uh, palatable to a, a person who's uneducated in the in the auditing world. Uh, you made it very easy to understand, and uh, and again, thanks, Linda. Uh, Mr. Bedali complimented your work again, just like we we hear from from multiple sources. So I just wanted to thank you, sir, for for coming up and giving us the presentation, and also explaining it to Mr. Greeno and I, again, making it simple to understand. Thank that was easy. I, 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 I only have one question, and, I, and I, I hate to put you on, on the spot, but yes, I know sir. we talked, um, not this year, but last year, about moving, moving forward and having um, another partner so that we don't have to change auditing firms. Is, is that still something you're pushing towards? Because we would love to have you continue to work with us and, and our staff. Uh, definitely. Uh, we are required by California law to rotate the partner after a certain number of years anyways. Uh, but we will have a partner available when the city chooses to do, uh, to do so. We will have a partner available to rotate. Awesome. Okay. So. Very good. Well, we very much appreciate the work and having served on the, the audit committee in the past, I have to hand it to you. For those of us who don't do this for a living, um, you have made it very palatable for, for all of us. And, uh, and it is always good to hear from an independent source that, that our staff is as good as we think they are. So they we are. appreciate that too. <laughs> all right. Thank you. So, all right. Anything, any final words? Ms. Lever, is there anything that you needed to tell us? All right, Mr. Bedali, thank you so much. We appreciate you coming. Of course. Thank you for having me. Thank Have you. a good evening. All right. Uh, Council, we will move out of this presentation, and we will go back into the consent calendar. We have one item left on the consent calendar. That is the audit report, which we just was, uh, was presented to us by Mr. Bedawi for 2016-2017. I would entertain a motion that we uh, accept the audit report. So, so moved. Okay, I've got multiple. Uh, Ms. Clerk, if you'll just choose one of them. Um, one of you are okay with being the second? Certainly. Uh, Mr. Short is willing to be a second. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, would you please uh, poll the vote? Yes, sir. Uh, Council Member Short? Yes. Council Member Greeno? Yes. Council Member Fallman? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kime? And Mayor Inscore. Yes, very good. We'll move on through our agenda then. And we have no ceremonial items, but we do have one public hearing. Uh, it's item number seven on the agenda. Hold a public hearing regarding the fee schedule of the city of Crescent City um, and uh, the recommendation that we have attached. Uh, Ms. Lever, uh, address this for us.
Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Um, so normally we uh, look at the fee schedule every year in about May or June as part of our budget process. Um, you do have the option of updating the fee schedule at other times. And there are two fees that we would like to bring to you tonight um, to request that we update. One of them is, uh, it's called SB 1186. It's a fee that the state requires us to charge. It's attached to business licenses. Um, for the last several years, it's been a dollar. Uh, what happens with that money is the city keeps a portion of it. We send a portion of it to the state. It has to be used for ADA compliance activities. And they announced that effective in January, right now, um, they are raising that mandatory fee to $4. So we just need to update our fee schedule. That's not something that the city is choosing to impose, but the state has regulated. Um, I do need to ask for council direction on one item related to that. Um, so as you know, we do allow certain businesses an exemption uh, for business license fees. Um, nonprofits, veteran owned businesses, there's a couple of other exceptions. And up to now, we have not been charging them that $1 fee, but that $1 fee still has to be collected into this fund. So the city has just been paying that $1. I just want to clarify with the council if you want us to continue doing that now that that fee is increasing. Or the other option would be the exempt businesses would have to pay the $4 fee, but not any other city fees related to the business license. The other fee that is proposed tonight is for the taxi cab application. Um, so what happens when somebody turns in an application to be a taxi cab operator, they have to be fingerprinted and they have to have a background check done. And the way that actually works is that the city receives a bill from the DOJ or the mailroom for providing those services. And this is just to recoup those costs. So the recommendation is to hold a public hearing uh, provide direction on that uh, $1 versus $4 exemption, and then um, approve a resolution to update the fee schedule if you choose. All right. Council, any questions from Ms. Lee? How many businesses are you looking at that get these exemptions? There's about 35 right now. Okay. Anybody else? No, sir. The, with the with the the way that the it's structured with um, SB uh, 1186, they're changing the percentage. So, if it's for ADA, did they change any of the of what it, this money is to be used for nope. with this? So then, uh, we 90 percent stays, 10 percent goes on. So three dollars and what's nine times or three dollars and sixty cents do we have to put that into a separate fund and maintain that to be used only for those items and then send them the 40 cents per license yes and and we have been doing that for the last several years um, since the fees only been a dollar total and I think we've been doing this since 2013 I believe we've got under two thousand dollars in it so we've just been building it up until we have enough to actually do something with it All right. You might now. Well, I guess so. The, the 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 first question, as far as SB 1186 is, for the council is, um, is it the council's desire to continue with the the practice of waiving this this portion of this fee, along with the rest of their business licenses for nonprofits, veterans organizations, you no, know, uh, going going forward um, or changing and assessing that that portion but not the rest of the of the permit fees or a portion either way I mr question is this a yearly fee or yes okay. it's once per year okay. I, think, I think we should continue to pay that we're talking about keeping most of those dollars in our coffers to do improvements yeah. around the city for ADA improvements. I think it's a paltry sum. So 90% we're just, we're giving back to ourselves, setting it aside for, for this. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. For these 35 businesses. Right. Or whatever. Everybody else is, is paying into it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
echo uh, Mr. Short's comments. Okay. Okay. Well, then let's 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 address SB 1186 How, first. Then. I do have one more question. Yeah. How often do they change these regulations? I mean, um, SB 1186 was new when we started in 2000. Either at the end of 2012 or 2013, and this is the first time they've made a change okay. since then. Okay, it just seems like if they're going to keep re-upping it every year. Well, they're not. They 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 set a schedule, and so the the four dollars okay. runs through January 2024, and then it's going to return back mm -hmm. to a dollar. Right. Okay. So they've they've set up. I mean, obviously, they, the legislature could come back and make a change to it, but that's the that's the, the plan at least. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that somebody has lobbied for for local municipalities to be forced into doing more ADA work, and so this is a way to insist that there is more money set aside to do ADA work. I couldn't comment. That, that could be true. But okay. since it's people Thank like you. us that come up with those ideas, <laughs> politicians, I mean. So, okay, uh, well, let's take 1180, SB 1186 first and, and the specific uh, $4 uh, collection. Um, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Could I just point out, uh, we do need to have public comment on the public hearing portion before you make a decision. Okay. Already. Um, so, but we can, we can deal with these separately. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's, let's deal with this first. Do we have any public comment regarding this business uh, license uh, fee increase? All right. We'll close public comment. Bring it back to the council then. Um, if I could get a, a motion regarding what to do concerning the $4, two things, to increase our fee structure to the $4 for business licenses for SB 1186, and then secondly, uh, what to do in regards to, the, to nonprofits and veterans organizations. Mr. Mayor, I move we increase our fees for SB 1186 up to the mandated four dollars and continue to pay those as the city for exempt businesses all right i have a, a motion do i have a second seconded i have a motion and a second do we have any public comment on this action seeing none a public a closed public comment and bring it back would you please pull the vote yes sir uh, council member short yes council member greeno Yes. Council Member Fallman. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kime. Yes. And Mayor Inscore. Yes. Very good. All right. Second item: taxi cabs. Um, so this is uh, to cover the cost of the fingerprinting and background check services. The way it's been working up until now, the person who who wants to apply to be a taxi cab operator, they go out and they have their fingerprints taken. They submit to a background check. The city then receives a bill for that, and then we try to bill the person who applied and collect it after the fact. This would just let us collect it at the time of the application. Okay, makes perfect sense to me. Any, any questions, comments? I was gonna say that makes complete sense. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Did it. Okay, let's open up. We have any public comment regarding the taxi cab operator application fee. Saying none, I'll close public comment then and bring it back to the council for uh, a motion regarding this fee. This is a new fee. It's not a new fee, it's just how we collect it. It wasn't on the fee schedule before. Oh, we were just trying to get reimbursed for a cost based on a sort of a uh, as it happened basis. And this just puts it on the fee schedule so that it's very clear from the beginning if you turn in this application, this is what you're going to have to pay for. Okay. So this is the actual resolution. 2018-01, is that correct? Uh, yes, we will we'll approve the resolution after we've got clarity on the, the actions. So we'll, I guess we'll have a third action. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Mayor, I would move that we add a fee of $70 to cover the services and staff time for reviewing applications of taxi cab companies. I have a motion to have a second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Would you please pull the vote? Yes, sir. Council Member Fallman? Yes. Council Member Greeno? Yes. Council Member Short? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kime? Yes. And Mayor Inscore? Yes. Uh, and now we will turn our attention to Resolution 2018 01, 
resolution of the City Council of the City of Crescent City, California, establishing certain fees and increasing certain existing fees for various city services provided by the City of Crescent City. And we will note uh, in um, this resolution the actions that we just took regarding um, SB 1186 and uh, the taxi cab fee. Do you have a motion to approve resolution 2018-01? So, so moved. I have a motion by Councilman Fallman. Do we have a second? Second. I have a second by Mr. Trigrino. Any public comment on resolution 2018-01? Seeing none, close public comment. Would you please pull the vote? Yes, sir. Council Member Greeno? Yes. Council Member Fallman? Yes. Council Member Short? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Keim? Yes. And Mayor Inscore? Yes. Very good. Thank you. All right. We are moving along Okay, so we need to uh, adjourn from the city council and reconvene as the successor agency. Uh, we'll dispense a roll call, identify that all board members are present. Um, we do not have, is, is number eight, uh, is that the consent item? I'm, I'm assuming it is. The yes, appointment. it's the consent item. Okay, so we have one item on, on consent, the appointment of, of Mr. Taylor to the Oversight Board. We, we need to have a representation um, there. Do I have any public comment on our consent calendar for the successor agency? Seeing none, I'll close uh, public comment, bring it back to the board for uh, action. Move to approve the consent calendar for the successor agency. We have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Seconded. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. Um, not any money involved in this. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> All right. Under business items, we have uh, our uh, ROPs and then a uh, request for proposals regarding property. Uh, Ms. Lieber. Thank you again. Um, so for this evening, we have the ROPS, the recognized obligation payment schedule for the successor agency for fiscal year 2018-19. Um, this will be presented to you tonight for approval. Assuming it is approved, it will go to the oversight board this week on Wednesday for approval, and then it will be submitted to the county and the state. Um, as you know, when, this, when the redevelopment agency was, di was dissolved and the successor agency was established, the main purpose of the successor agency is to wind everything down from the RDA and basically get everything closed out. So the successor agency has a couple of outstanding loans. Um, this ROPS would basically tell the state that we would like to make a payment of approximately $106,000 on that loan this year. That would take uh, basically the remaining funds in the successor agency um, plus a little bit from the RPTTF funds to make that payment. Um, we do have to pay the CREF loan off completely before we can start paying on the water fund loan. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have any questions about this. Uh, one thing to note is that assuming the state does approve our request for RPTTF this time, then that means that in the year following that we can start asking them to pay for some of our admin time again which we used to do and then for the last couple of years they have not let us okay do you have any questions okay. did i look at the numbers correctly and is are we does it look like we will then pay that off next year likely if the numbers stay the, the same yes. as they have in the last two years mm -hmm. yes that's Very correct good. that that is the plan of course it always depends on what property tax does and the admin allocations and all of that but it should be good. yes very good all right there's one page would be nice to be off oh i'm sorry um okay anybody have any questions regarding Sure. Rob's payments. Okay. Um, then we we have a, an attached resolution, SA 2018-01, um, to uh, approve. Move to approve or to adopt resolution SA 2018-01, approving the Rob schedule. Did we get public comment on this? We did not. I, I will. 
Okay. Thank All you. right. <laughs> I will. Do you have a, do you have a second? Second. All right, I have a motion to second. Do we have any public comment on the resolution SA 2018-01 of the successor agency for re uh, recognized uh, obligation of payment schedule? Seeing none, we'll close public comment and we will bring it back to the board for um, a vote. Would you, Kirk, would you please uh, pull the vote? Yes, sir. Council Member Fallman? Yes. Council Member Short? Yes. Council Member Greeno? Yes. Sorry, Vice Chair Kime and Chairman and Score. Yes. yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Uh, what's next? Where are we? RFP. Um, so this was a item that we discussed previously, and now we have the RFP ready to go out mm -hmm. to try to address the two properties that we're holding in trust on behalf of the. Yes. Okay. So when the RDA was dissolved, it owned five pieces of property, um, two vacant parcels, which are the subject of this RFP, and then also City Hall, the Police Department, and the Housing Authority, which were transferred to city ownership. So the only thing that the successor agency still owns is these two vacant parcels. At the last um, successor agency meeting, uh, I was directed to put together a request for proposals so that we could get a realtor to try to sell these two pieces of property. Um, our former city clerk, Kimmy Scott, reached out to some other cities and got a draft RFP um, and made some, did some work and, and modified that. I also worked on it and our city attorney worked on it. So what you have before you is the RFP that uh, we are proposing to publish so that we can get this process moving. But I wanted to give you as a board a chance to review it and see if you had any changes you want us to make before we publish this. Okay. Does the board have any, any uh, questions or comments, concerns regarding the uh, RFP for uh, realtor services? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I may have just missed this, but I, I I may have just missed this, but I did not see this on the successor agency agenda. Do we not need the, for Wednesday, do we Do you mean the oversight board? I mean the oversight board. <laughs> right. The oversight board doesn't have to we approve have this. To see it again. I'll just give an informational update. Okay. I get these two mixed up. Cause it's understandable. Yeah. Okay. Any, anybody have anything? Okay, we have any public comment on this RFP uh, putting out for realtor services uh, for these two parcels? Seeing none, we'll close public comment and bring it back um, to the oversight board for um, action. I guess you're just asking to us to approve the RFP? Yes, sir. Okay. And, and direct staff to publish it, yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, why don't you make that motion so you got it all figured out. <laughs> I move we uh, approve the request for proposal and direct staff to publish the RFP and so solicit proposals. Very good. Do I have a second? Seconded. I have a motion and a second. Um, would you please pull the vote? Sure. Board Member Short? Yes. Board Member Greeno? Yes. Board Member Fallman? Yes. Vice Chair Kine? Yes. And uh, Chairman Inscore? Yes. Very good. All right. All right. Um, having no continuing business or new business for the oversight board, uh, we will uh, we will return to the city council and we will finish up. Um, I don't know that we have any legislative matters that we need to specifically uh, address. Um, you've got a you've got a long list of things already, right? Interim city manager. Oh, let's go ahead and turn our attention to the council. I know we've been on holiday, but if you have anything specific, uh, council members that you would like to report out uh, of the past weeks or uh, in upcoming meetings or so forth, I'll give you an opportunity to do so. Mr. Green, I'm going to start with you. you. Have anything you want to share tonight? I do not have it. No? Short? Sure. No, sir. Mr. Fallen? Other than uh, welcoming Mr. Weir on as our interim city manager, I don't have anything to offer tonight. All right, very good. Pro Tem, Kyle? I am good, thank you. Very good. All right, well, I've trusted everybody did have a good holiday season. I will just bring up one item that we have talked about previously that I would like to get the council to weigh in on. Um, we need to continue to address the ongoing 
financial situation of our of our uh, sewer fund. Um, just from a historical standpoint, the, the city has not raised sewer rates since I've been on the council. The last adopted sewer rate increase was in March of 2014 and uh, took effect in July of 2014. So we are, we are pushing four years without any increases. Uh, I know that we had a, a, a failed attempt at, at a different uh, consideration regarding um, sewer rates with consumption base and, and those things have been put on hold as we continue to address how do we best serve our community. At the same time, the, the cost of doing business for every entity, private and public, has continued to increase. We all know that it costs more money to do business today than it did four years ago. In the most recent um, Western States uh, CPI, we saw about a 2.7% increase. Um, so for some people, you look at that as COLA or what goes up, you know, as far as from that kind of thing. I think that I would like to ask the council to, to consider asking staff to begin a, a, a process of really looking at addressing our current sewer rate structure without changing it materially, but simply saying we, we need an increase of revenue after almost four years and to start with maybe that 2.7 number and say we need to work with something to increase revenues so that we can continue to provide services. So. I just want to throw that out to the council um, before we uh, uh, direct staff. Staff has talked about some of these things, um, but I'd like to get council's thoughts on that. I concur. I, I think it's no secret that we need to have some action with our sewer fund. And I think taking a modest approach and just dealing with the CPI is a fair way to go about it. Okay. When, when I ran for office, I advocated for the sewer increase at the Measure F, and it didn't pass. So I, I believe that we d it's high time uh, to, and we, we just need to buckle down and take care of uh, our sewer and, and our water systems that, you know, we take full advantage of every day. I yeah, mean, do. We, we, don't <laughs> we, we don't appreciate them until they're not there, um, when things don't start, you know. You push that lever and things don't go away. You're <laughs> I mean, I hate to be blunt, but you know, we got to keep things going. Yeah, it is, it is, so. a, it is a valid point. Keep things moving. Yes. Keep things moving. Thank yes. you. All right, Mr. Fallman, um, any thoughts? I mean, I don't think we've had an explicit conversation about sewer rates since the three of us were elected to council. We've had discussions about rates generally, discussion about budgets generally, but I think it's time that we really zero in on that focus or that area, public policy. So. I'd like to see what staff can come up with. It's clear that, you know, when you look at the numbers and you look at the needs to fulfill and the desires for, you know, bringing in new businesses and expanding, yeah. we need to reevaluate. We do. And, and I, I think one of the things that, that, that we need to be clear about when we, even as we communicate to the public, and, and there's not anybody up here that, that just wants to take more money out of people's pockets because those are our pockets as well. And, and we're not talking about doing anything that is going to change materially the long-term viability of our entire system. There are huge things that we're going to have to address going forward some of those are capital improvement things. Some of those things we're going to be able to do with grant funding. Some of those things may be done as we continue to work with the State Water Resource Control Board. And staff has worked hard at that, and I've been part of some of those discussions of looking at that. Really what we're talking about, from my perspective, of, of, a, of a, just a cost of living, CPI increase, a modest increase, is how do we make sure that we just keep that plant running as it is? And we need to be able to do that because it's more expensive to do that today than it was last year. And the assumption will be it'll be more expensive for anybody that's in business to do business next year than it was this year. Uh, even even simple things like uh, labor laws where uh, the, the mandatory minimum wage, while that may not apply to very many of our workers, it still has impacts. And, and, it's, and every business in our community understands that. So 
I, requirements from the state. Exactly. As requirements from the state come down. Those are those are that's money that we don't have a choice. Yeah. We have to spend. Yeah. We have to upgrade and we have to improve. Okay. Well, uh, Mr. Weir, obviously your 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 first day on the job, you you get the mm -hmm. the, the the great opportunity to. Uh, address this, but I hope that 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 you've heard clearly from the council that you have our support with the staff to begin addressing these issues and bringing back something to us that we can that we can talk with staff about and hopefully with your leadership and leadership of our financial team to be able to say how do we approach this in a way that that we can really address uh, our immediate needs to make sure that this system uh, stays viable. So. You know, any input you want to give tonight, you know, I didn't, don't expect you to have a plan. I just want to make sure we get this discussion started. No, and I definitely appreciate uh, getting this discussion started. It's uh, it's it's vital for this community, as as you all iterated. And so, I just want to thank you for for the support in getting this done. Uh, it's it's not only the fact that costs continue to rise. Our debt service that we have on our loan it goes up a hundred thousand dollars each year until it finally caps out I believe we're at about 1.3 1.4 now and that's going to go up till we get almost to 1.7 so as we go through we have to start doing something to increase our revenues our revenues haven't really increased since since 2000 uh, since 2014 and so it's time to do something and, and as inflation goes uh, so do our costs as far as clear direction from the council, are you looking for staff to come back with the last year's CPI increase? Because obviously, it's I, I mean, obviously CPI is is uh, it comes up quarterly. I, I I I think that we're in that that number. If if an odd number like I, I just pulled up the Western states from last year, yeah. it was two point seven because we talked about it in other in other uh, forums. If if we want to go with a round number that works better for communication, I'm not against that. If that's 2.5 or if that's three, okay. uh, we can pull the we we can in the process. I don't I don't expect that you'll have something back to us at our next meeting. We can we can look again in March at what those numbers are March to March. Ms. Lieber, they come out quarterly, don't they? I, I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but I, we, we didn't talk about that. Did did do the CPIs come out? Quarterly. Um, they they actually publish a monthly oh, they, year okay. over year number. Yeah. So we can we can so look at what that is. We can pick any month really. Yeah. I guess my recommendation, and I get the consensus from the council, is is look at what our most recent uh, 12 months are and see what that what that number is. Then we're at least when we communicate to the public, we're communicating to them exactly where we are, and and we're not trying to get something other than making sure we keep up with costs. So does that seem reasonable? Certainly. Okay. I agree with that. Okay. Clear okay. direction. Thank you. All right. Um, Mr. Rear, do you have anything that you want to share with us tonight before we um, dismiss? I was I was kind of curious about the two little people in the back, see if they had any public comment on the new <laughs> city manager's uh, <laughs> appointment. Thank you, Councilman. Troopers Short, back uh, there watching uh, the uh, new city manager. Uh, yeah. Nothing, yeah, so. Sienna? No comments? <laughs> Want to say something about your dad's new? Yeah. All right. <laughs> wow. Oh, daddy's good. Cool. There we go. Here we yeah, go. Yeah, like that's worth, that's that's worth something tonight, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, but yes, I would like to just uh, thank my family who happens to be in the audience. I have my wife, Amber, and my daughter, Sienna, and my, and my son, Marcus. And so I'd like to thank them for all of their support. And, uh, and thank the council as this is this is going to be challenging times we have a lot of challenges ahead of us but together council staff that we have we'll get through it so right. i look forward to it thank you thank autumn luna for being here sitting in and being here tonight we appreciate you coming in and helping us my pleasure good we'll see you again in two weeks i i, I imagine uh because we are because another monday another meeting. monday meeting yeah i think that's meeting. right all right i think martha's in brookings now. On, on, on the yeah. odd or even weeks, whatever it all is. All right, see you it's in two Okay, weeks. it's, yeah, so we'll, it's all good. All right, well, we're going to stand adjourned until our next meeting, which will also be a special meeting on January 22nd, 2018, right here. We're adjourned.